Welcome back. Next, we'll take a look at the two different types of tables we can have. And those are unkeyed and keyed. So first of all, how can we identify an unkeyed versus a keyed table? The first way to do that is just visually. So if we call example here and keyed example, you'll see example just has one line and it's horizontal. And that means it's an unkeyed table. And then when we have an horizontal line as well as a vertical line, that means we have a key table and the column the table is keyed on is B. Now we can also tell that um, using code running our type example. So if we run type on example and type on keyed example, you'll see we get 98H and 99H. And if we hop over to our reference card, we'll see 98H is a table and 99 is a dictionary. So a key table is actually a dictionary and we'll see that um, a little later on. So first of all, we're going to look at the unkey tables, otherwise just known as tables. Um, so it can be described in three different ways. So the first way is as a list of dictionaries where each dictionary is a record in our table. If we run example, we see we get our unkey table returned. And if we run the first keyword on example, you'll see we just get the first row returned. But we're getting it returned as a dictionary. Remember when we only have the vertical dotted line here, this is a dictionary. And if we run type on this, we'll see we get 99H. So a table can be thought of as a list of dictionaries. Um, have a go with this exercise. So we're turning the final row from our example table and verify that it is in fact a dictionary. Now the second way that you can describe an unkey table is as a flipped column dictionary. And when we say flip, we mean transposed here. So let's look at that. We can actually use the inbuilt keyword flip to do this. Um, so if we have our example table as before and we run flip on this, you'll see what's happened is this line has simply moved down here. So I've transposed my dictionary or flipped it. And that's leaving me with a dictionary. So if I run type on D now, you'll see I've got a dictionary here. And this allows me to access my flipped table or dictionary like I would any standard dictionary which we learned about in the previous module so I can retrieve um, passing a key like this so B is one of my keys and I get my results mini example and table and this is a example of a column dictionary that we've seen in the previous module now with column dictionaries we may want to index at depth so instead of getting all of um, the values returned for B I just want the first and the second. So I'm able to pass the zero width and the first index here. And I'm just retrieved mini and example. And if I just wanted mini and table back, I could pass zero and two, for example. And similarly, I could update those values. So we've seen this update syntax. Um, the only difference here is that I'm doing it at depth. So my first parameter here is the key and the second one is the indexes that I want to amend. So I'm changing mini an example to be multiplied by two. So it's changed from one to two and two to four. And then table remains the same because I haven't updated that index. And then if I've now assigned that to be this new value, if I flip that back into a table, you'll see two and four are my new values for A. And note, if you do have a dictionary and you're trying to flip it into a table, um, your values here must be a list and they must be of equal length. Um, if you don't get that, um, you're not able to do this flip. Okay. Um, and the third way now we have of describing our one key table is a collection of lists of equal length. These are called columns and they're the values in our column dictionary. We can access our columns within our table using the same notation we use for dictionary. So we're passing in here the column name and you'll see we're retrieved a list. So that's a list of long so we're getting 7h and if I pass two of my columns here I'll get a list of lists so you'll see that's 0h and then if I run each on this you'll see I get a list of longs and a list of symbols back okay so it may help you to think about um one of these more than the other when you're thinking about what actually is a table um but logically it's it's all of these three things um, so have a go with this exercise, so creating a new column, um, and we want you to use this dictionary assignment syntax to do that. OK, 
Okay, let's move on and look at our second example of tables, which are key tables. And they're really a special form of dictionaries. And we've seen above how we know it's a dictionary, how we know it's a key table is we've got both the horizontal and the vertical line. Um, and because it's this key table and it's a special form of a dictionary, we're able to use the key keyword and the value keyword. So if I run in key on my key table, I'm retrieved the key, which is everything to the left of this vertical dotted line. And if I run value, it's everything to the right of this vertical dotted line. And we're actually able to create a key table using the bang keyword. So remember in our previous module, we would create a dictionary passing um, a list on the left hand side and a list on the right hand side. Um, we can do this to create a key table um, and instead of lists, we're passing two unkey tables and they must be of equal length here for this to work. So if I've got example and complex tab and we'll just run them above to remind ourselves what they look like and complex tab. So I've got two tables equal length and they're both unkeyed and I run them against the bang operator. You'll see I've got a new key table created where I've got two columns for my key and two columns in my value. Now, if we try and run the same commands as we did with our unkey table, we get different results. So for example, here I'm using that first keyword again, and I'm just gonna run that on my example table to remind us what that did. It returned my first row of the table as a dictionary. So example was three rows long and I just got one in mini returned as a dictionary. If I run first on my keyed example table, what happens is I only get the first record for the value side of the table. So keyed example here has columns B and A, and all that's coming back is A and 1 um, when I run first on that. So rather than getting mini and 1 back, I'm getting A and 1 as a dictionary. So that might be unexpected if you're not um, aware that you've got a key table that you're retrieving from. Um, if I run first value on that, it gives me the same thing. So you're only getting the first um, result back from the value of the, the keyed example. Um, also, we're not able to retrieve the columns by name as we did with the unkey table. So again, let's have a go at doing this with our unkey table to remind ourselves. So example has columns A and B. So I'm going to do A and remember I was able to get my list back. So um, my column A back as a list. If I try and do that, so in this I might expect three symbols to be re retrieved, mini, keyed, and example. What happens is I don't get that back. Um, so it's trying to basically find a key called B in that table and that's why it's not getting any value returned. So instead of passing the column name, I'm going to pass a, P a key here. So mini in this example here does exist and it retrieves me the value A1 as a dictionary. Um, and similarly, if I did keyed here instead, I would get A and 2 back. Um, and then if I try and call a key that doesn't know anything about, like large, I get the name of the column back, A, but no result. And that's what's happened here when I passed B in. Okay. Um, and then the final thing to look at in this video is how can we key and unkey a table? So we can easily convert between keyed and unkeyed. Um, so to key a table that's unkeyed, we can use the X key keyword. I said key a lot of times there. <laughs> um, and X key down here basically takes two parameters where the left hand side or the first one will be the list of columns that you want to key on. And then the right hand side will be your table. So over here, I'm passing A, um, and I'm just going to, again, run example beforehand because I think it's just useful to see. I've got an unkey table A and B, and when I pass the column A out in front as a symbol, the keyword X key, I see it. I've now added this dotted vertical line, which means I've made example a key table. Um, we can also do this with a table that's already keyed. So for example, this table here was keyed on B, and I'm gonna change the key to be A. So this will overwrite the key that you had before and create a new key. Okay, so this new key table is now keyed on A rather than B, 
and you'll see I'm able to retrieve my results by passing it a key. So three here is key and I get B, um, an example as a dictionary. Um, now this here is going to throw an error and you see we get a type error. And that's because not only is mini no longer a key, the type of the key is no longer a symbol. Um, so here we're passing it along. It is along. It's happy with that. As soon as I pass it anything other than along, I'm going to get a type error. Um, okay. Um, so we've got the solution there. It's just explaining that in a little more detail. Um, so what if I want to do vice versa? I've got a key table. I, I want to make it unkeyed. I can use this here notation. So instead of passing a list of columns, I just pass it an empty list, which is open and close round brackets. So you'll see key example before, how the dotted line here after B, um, and then when I unkey it, I'm left with an unkeyed table. Okay. So that's one way to do it using the X key keyword. We do actually have another option available to us. Um, so to use that option to unkey, we'd simply pass zero and the bang operator. So this is another overload of, of our bang operator. So if we hop over to our overloaded glyphs and over to bang, you'll see we can both key and unkey to make a simple table keyed or to make a key table simple. So if I do zero bang keyed example, it's the exact same thing as doing this. So I'm getting rid of any keys applied to that table. Now I can also use this notation to key an unkey table. So if I do um, example again, and I do one bang example, you'll see it creates a key on the very first column. So if I had three columns here and I did two key example, it would create a key for the first two columns. Um, so this is a shorthand way of keying a table. Um, I would recommend you use X key and explicitly list those columns that you want to key out in front. Um, it's just a more risk adverse way of doing it. Um, if you're looking at someone's code um, or even you're going back and looking at your own code, um, it's very hard to tell here what keys you've actually got on your table. Whereas if you've explicitly listed them at the front, um, it's obviously much more obvious from reading your code. It also protects against things like maybe your input table being reshuffled or reordered. This will always key the first one, um, whereas X key will you know, have the column name in there. Okay. So have a go with this exercise. So it's getting you to create a table, combining these two tables, example and complex tab, to have this order. And we want this table to be unkeyed. So there are many different ways of doing this. Um, so have a go at that and maybe try a few different ways if you can. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.